Hey everybody, it's Helen Hillix and I'm here to talk to you today about pornography and dating and to explore the question of are fewer young men interested in real people? <laughs> I've read some studies recently that are kind of alarming uh, and I'm not I'm not ready to just dive in and blame pornography, but I wanted to explore it with you and to challenge you to explore it in your own lives and with people that you know, and see if there, if you can come up with any anecdotal answers of these questions. The, the research shows that especially young men between the ages of 18 and 24 are having 19% decline in sexual activity over the previous 12 month period between two th the year 2000 and the year 2018. And, and again, that, that means that, that almost 20% fewer young men between 18 and 24 have had sexual contact within the prior 12 months. Now, one of the flaws of this study is that they don't define sex, but we're making the assumption that people are thinking that that, that means vaginal intercourse, uh, that that's what people are meaning when they're asking if you had sex in the last 12 months. Now, there are lots of reasons why that number might have plummeted, but, but let's explore some of them. Um, so, one of the reasons is that I believe anyway that, that young men's roles in the world are really unclear. That there isn't this idea that you grow up and you go to school and you get out of tech school or high school or college or whatever and then you go right into the workforce and then you marry as a young man and you have children and you uh, you can expect to be able to buy a home and have a good job with retirement and medical benefits. That idea of what is going to happen to a young man is gone. So the, the roles that they play in the world are unclear. The, the futures that young men have in front of them are very unclear. Will they ever be able to provide for a family? And the one demographic uh, that had the less, the least sex of all of them were unemployed or, or part-time employed, low income men. They are the ones that had the least amount of sex. And that makes me sad because, you know, I think it, it uh, suggests that, you know, they don't, they don't have a chance really. No, who wants to have sex with them? And because of that, of course, they lack confidence. And that's an element in why young men are not having sex. And, and it's also, I believe it's an out, it's one of the variables in why young men and all men are turning progressively more and more toward pornography as a part of their lives or as a complete substitute for relationships with real people. Another aspect of this question is, does it have to do with the fact that men are becoming adults later and later in life? It's harder and harder to get a job. It's harder and harder to move out of your parents' house. So that may be having an impact on the number or the, uh, yeah, the number of young men who are between 18 and 24 and have less sex. Now, the number increases a little bit in the older age groups, but it's still down from what it used to be before. The only one, the only age group is between 35 and 44 is the only age group that maintained the same uh, level of sexual activity now as, as in the year 2000. And I think, you know, a lot of that, of course, it has to do with the predominance of marriage in that age group. And that was one of the that was one of the groups that, that maintained its frequency is married people. So, you know, with people feeling insecure about getting married and not being able to get a job and move out, I mean, all these things are elements in 
why young people are not having sex as often. But, the, you know, pornography is definitely on the list. Every study that I read talked about that fact, that pornography is definitely one of the reasons that young men are not dating and they're not being sexual because they talked about two things that, that men want. And I, I don't know where they get this information, but novelty and abundance you know, are what men say they want in sex, novelty and abundance. And of course, pornography provides both of those things. Novelty, you can have any kind of sex you want with any person you want of any gender, any age, whatever, you know, you know, you have your menu and you just get to choose from it and you can have it instantly and as often as you like. So, the availability of that kind of instant gratification, which is another high value in our society, is instant gratification. You know, you want to feel better, take a pill. You know, you want to get off sexually, go to pornography. You know, you want to buy a new car, here's some cheap credit for you. Instantly, you can have what you fast food, you know, Uber Eats, they'll deliver it to you. I mean, everything fast, fast, fast. So pornography just fits the bill in that regard in terms of providing sex in a very fast and quickly and easily available way. Whereas a relationship with a real person is not like that. It is not like that. It takes a lot more time, a lot more effort and, and certain circumstances, you know, you're not going to probably get a, a girl, if you're a guy, to want to come home to your parents' house and sneak in the back door so mom doesn't hear. So it takes a lot more time and effort and energy to have a real relationship with a real person. And pornography definitely is, an, is a variable in the diminished uh, numbers regarding dating and young men having sexual encounters. Another big aspect, and as far as I'm concerned, in a, in a lot of ways, social media is like pornography, that it is also, it, it, it's competing for your time. It's promising free, easily accessible, constantly varied, abundant, novel entertainment. And so it, it may even be, I don't know if it's competing with the pornography industry, but I think they're, they go kind of hand in hand, is that that virtual reality of pornography and social media is definitely having an impact on our culture and on our society. And it also is eroding what little confidence young men might have because they look on social media and everybody's got a Lamborghini or Maserati and, you know, I'm 18 and I'm a millionaire. You can be too. You know, it's like the, the reality is gone with the wind and social media, media encourages you to compare yourself with people that are absolutely manufactured. So it's kind of devastating, you know, it's really kind of devastating to think about what is the impact of all this virtual reality on the, the, the self-confidence and self-esteem of young men, but also on the idea that they can have an, a, a real life virtually. And it's not the same. It is absolutely not the same. There's another aspect of it, too, because the, the ego tells you, you know, you're never going to be rejected with pornography. The, the person's never going to say no to you, they will, and they will do whatever you want them to do. And one of the studies that I read talked about how the use of pornography is related to increases in both verbal and physical aggression during sexual encounters with real people. So the, even people who are having sex, if you're also using pornography, there is a, a higher incidence of aggression verbally and physically with people who use pornography. So it, it's a whole new world. And, and I'm, I'm doing this podcast and video to challenge you to take a look at your behavior 
take a look at your partner's behavior or your brother's behavior or your son's behavior, you know, and talk about it. Talk about it as real people talk to one another about real issues and that that social media and pornography do not prepare you for the real world. They do not prepare you for how to have a healthy relationship with a person, even if it's not sexual. And that's one of the things that that is contributing to uh, young men becoming adults later and later is that they don't have the practice. They do not have the practice of engaging with people directly. Everybody's on their phones. Everybody's texting. Everybody's on social media and so many people are using pornography so they, they don't have the practice that they need to be able to be in a romantic relationship or any other kind to be honest all of these factors are contributing and another factor that contributes is that our society values the illusion of power over connection rather than connection, I should say. Our society values the illusion of power. If you, if you have money, if you have success, if you have big muscles, you know, it's like that, that you are supposed to have the illusion of power. No one in, you know, in the social media or the, you know, the world of, of publicity talks about connection is really the most important thing in your life. And that makes me super sad because it's not true. You know, the illusion of power isn't going to get you anything except hungry for more power and more greedy. And in the end of your life, I, I say this over and over. At the end of your life, you're not going to say, I wish I had another thousand dollars in the bank or even another million dollars in the bank when you're dying on your deathbed. You are not going to be saying that. You're going to be saying, I wish I had more connection. So I'm challenging you to take a look at yourself and take a look at those around you and support each other to have this conversation about why aren't you dating? Why aren't you socializing? And I, even with the pandemic, even with the pandemic, and we, it's been going on for seven months now, even with that pandemic situation and the lockdown and the social distancing, you can still be developing intimate relationships at, on Zoom. You know, you're not going to be touching people, but, but you, you know, at a certain point in your relationship, you do touch the person. You both get tested and you, you know, you make sure it's safe. And if you feel like you love the person, you move into a physical relationship but you can get to know people in a quite intimate way, even without touching. And the practice, that's what I tell people, is dating is for practice. It's for practice, practice, practice. Getting experiences, telling the truth, uh, watching your reactions, watching other people's reactions. It's what this world is needing, is the practice relating in a genuine way. And that doesn't take physical contact to be genuine. So readjust your priorities. Remember that connections are what makes your life happy, not the illusion of power. And of course, you know, all these things that I've mentioned are not simple one-to-one -one kinds of, of uh, conclusions. It's not a one-to-one -one ratio between if you use pornography, you're not going to have any relationships or if, you're, if you spend too much time on social media, but there is a relationship between those things. So there, there is interference being caused by pornography and social media and, and men's uh, inability to find stable work and all those things are having an impact. And the, the availability of instant gratification is eroding the motivation of young men to go out and seek real people. So please talk about this. Please explore this. Please look honestly at yourself 
and see what behaviors and beliefs might be interfering in your own motivation to connect to people deeply and genuinely, because that's what makes people happy. So I love you and I will talk to you next week.